Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com. Put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'll send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and today I'm going to do something a little different because I'm going to critique the work of someone that went with me to the Philadelphia Union game to shoot her very first professional soccer game where she got to borrow a 402.8 RF from Canon. Now, they let me borrow it and then I let her use it. She was right next to me shooting the game. She was using her Canon R6 and I was using the R3. Now, she also used the 70 to 200 2.8 RF but I asked her to send me her best of the best keepers to take a look at, to see what I think, and to see how she called them down and how she did uh, as a first time shooter at a professional soccer match. Now she also sent me some of her raw files because she had some questions about how I would edit them and I'm gonna get to that as well. But let's jump in to the Critiki McCritikerson where we're gonna see how she did and also pick the best of the best with honors, sir. So here we go. Let's jump into this. So this is practice. Practice? Oh, it's practice and it's cropped quite a bit. Now, I can tell you it's cropped quite a bit because it's a 70 to 202.8. She wasn't using or comfortable with the 402.8 just yet, but that's perfectly fine. In terms of composition with the crop, this is exactly what it needs to be. Really good moment, uh, good composition, settings 1 2500th, uh, 2.8, ISO 200, perfectly fine. I think it's a little hot in terms of brightness. Now this is a little more difficult because it's in the shade. Uh, you got the shade and you got the sun coming in, but that's, I mean, that's it. Like I would tighten it up to that amount. That's what I would end up doing. Let's move on to the next slide tackle. How are we looking? 70 to 2.8, which I like using in close with soccer because you can get some more stuff, uh, just more action, more people, and this just wouldn't happen at 402.8. Again, I think it's slightly overexposed. This is just something you got to look at in the viewfinder, and I can't, you know, my settings may be a little different, so I just think it's a little, just a little on the hot side, so we just bring it down. Yeah, it's a lot on the hot side. We just bring it down. But once you bring it down with the raw file, you're perfectly fine. So another good moment captured right there. Now, when it comes to the cropping thing, uh, I, would, I almost said all sports photographers. I personally don't do it. But yes, just about every sports photographer does it, and they're perfectly fine with it. And that's totally okay. Would my stuff be better if I would just crop? The answer is probably because you would get the perfect composition after the fact and not while you're shooting. My goal is to try to do it as best as possible in the camera when it comes to the composition. Perfectly fine if you want to crop. You've got plenty of data, plenty of pixels. Even though it's an R6, it's 20 megapixels, you still have the capability to do it. Not a problem at all. This is good. Crossing shot coming in in front of the net. We got the 70 to 200 still. Um, it's good. I mean, this is, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for the action in front of the net. You want to start shooting when the action's happening or right before, as it's happening, boom, you focus, here it comes, soccer ball comes up to the goal, brrr, you want to bang it out and you want to try to get that peak action. I mean, it would be better if they were looking towards us, but there's nothing you can do about that. The good thing here is I asked her to pick her best of the best, right? So she picked 40. I don't care how many she took, to get the 40. As long as she knows how to edit down to show me the best of the best, that's all that matters. That's what it's all about. So that's okay. Is it is it hot? Is it too hot? I mean, it's not hot and I think I wanna warm it up and then punch it up just a little bit. I think it's a little oversaturated. I, I think she may have used Skittles as a starting point. Yeah, it's too blue. That's where it started. That's where it edited. Um, maybe a little too green and we can just pump it out like that and we're good. So this is after our goal was scored. This is this is really good. You wanna see the crowd going nuts. You've got all the sons of Ben waving their flags and you've got people lighting the smoke bombs and waving them up in the air like they really don't care. Um, yeah, good. That's after our goal is scored. So you got everybody going nuts up in the crowd, so that's good. So we got the goalie throwing the ball out. Now we got a 402.8. I'm curious how much it was cropped, uh, but that's okay. Um, Faster shutter speed, Dina, faster shutter speed. So one, one thousandth, we need to go faster. What time was this taken? This was taken at eight o'clock. Yeah, so we talked about this. Um, the union photographer who's shooting a Z9, I'm like, what are you shooting at? He's like 3200 ISO at 3200th of a second at 2.8. 
That's what he's doing. I was up there. I was at like 25 hundredth of a second at 2500 ISO. So yeah, in this case, this blur, this, this extra little movement. Now I don't care about movement sometimes. I think it's fine. It can add to it. I just think one one thousandth is a little slow in this situation and the R6 can totally handle much more than that. Um, darker. It was a little overexposed again. Just it's too bright. Got to bring that down in the camera and boom, we're right there. Uh, this one, not as much. This is a little, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just the defender kicking the ball. So not, not the best of the best with honor, sir. Uh, this is not in focus. So this is not going to be one that I would pick. Uh, same thing. We need to speed this up. Just get, get yourself as fast as, as possible. Um, the, you, this camera could shoot it. 4,000 ISO with a problem, without a problem if you needed. But I'd rather be at 1 2,500th to 1 3, uh, 3 hundredth of a second or 1 4,000th all day. This one's just not in focus, so we got to can it. Doesn't get used. Uh, why do we have the ref over here? I don't know if this was between plays. It's just an awkward place where the ball is. He looks a little awkward in this situation. So we're at 1 2,000th, 1,600. It's still over, so we could speed up the shutter speed. Yeah, it's a little too slow, but that, that's how I would end up editing it. It's too, too bright. Let me jump in here real quick because I want to show you this image edited using Fropack 3 starting with Zoolander. Now that's what Zoolander makes it look like, but if you're looking to be more realistic because it's a sports photo, generally you don't want to get too creative with the colors. We've got something like Prestige Worldwide, which works out really, really well. And then if you want to get really creative, we got something like Fifth Element right here. It still gives it a unique look and that's what the presets are all about. But I personally went up to Fropack 1 and used something called Skittles. Now that's where Skittles started and this is why I always say presets give you a great starting point because you can pull back on them. You can then make some tweaks to the way that you like them and then resave them to your taste. And so if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to get the triple play bundle with Fropack 1, 2, and 3, when one includes Skittles, you can save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. Ooh, look at the separation that you get with the background. Just so nice. Um, same thing right here. A um, little hot. I could look at, look at the grass. Like I know the color of the grass and that's not the color of the grass. It's also definitely probably using Skittles. So Skittles pumps it up a little bit in terms of pumps up those greens. So I just pull back. I want to pull back on them, but let's warm it up. Let's warm it up. See the difference? See how that is? And then we edit right here. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Increase the rating, but yeah. We go like that and we're much better. It's a good photo. I like the way that the negative space is there with the out of focus. This, all right, we got, the, we got the ball over here. We got the guy running after it. Generally, I would pick the one where the foot is about to come down onto the ground. I mean, this is fine. It's just, you know, it's just boring action across the field. And that happens with soccer quite a bit. There's a lot of boring action where the guys are just running. That's why I like having the 70 to 200 for in front of the net as well, uh, because that's where a lot of the action is going to happen and you can get multiple people. Now, if you're trying to, to get those just tight action shots, just where you isolate the subject, which is fine to get, um, you want to try and fill the frame as much as possible. And this may be too far across the field in this case. So you want to try to get those verticals as they're running towards you. Keep going. Yeah, there you go. That's a nice horizontal as he's running towards us. Um, R6, 3200, 1, 3200. Yeah, I, I just think that's perfectly fine. Focus wise, I think it's in. A little hot, a little hot. Bring it down. I know that brings up the shadows a little bit, but you see how it's tightened much better. We'll get to editing the other ones, but that's a good shot. All right, yeah, so action in front, I mean, it's not action, but look at the isolation. Look at the colors and the tones. Really nice job finding it. Um, yeah, fine, good for storytelling. That's too magenta. Let's warm it up. Let's warm it up a little bit. Yeah, so I, I rather see him in the run with the foot coming down. And I'm not sure that that one's actually tight. It may be on the 31 and not in the in the leg. I like this one, actually. I like this. I like this with the uh, about to kick the ball. 
we're definitely going to work on some of this editing because I, I want to get to those. I want to get to those raw files because um, because I, I, I really like this photo, but I want to get to those raw files. Uh, for someone who's shooting this for the first time, I think she's doing a really good job already right off the rip. Yeah, foot off the ground, good. I don't care that this guy has his eyes closed because he's chasing. All right, slide tackle, maybe a little after, maybe right after if there is another one. Oh, there it is, there it is. Oh, so it's how do we decide which to pick? So I, I, I actually, this is really good. Um, First one, really not necessary. Okay, so it's a sequence here, four shots. So if I had to pick from them, so we got the guy going into slide tackle. I get this one for first contact, and then we show the next one for him crying already before he hits the ground, right? So really good, Dina, being on the action and, and getting the subject. I mean, really good job operating with the 400-2.8 after never using a 402.8 as well, and, and also using the walk stool for the first time and only falling off of it once. Only once. Oh, great action in front of the net. So, oh, he was offside, right? Was this the one they called offside on? But this is great. Capturing there, the ball's going in, the goalie's getting ready to, to do something. Her friends are here out of focus in the background, so that's even cooler. Um, did really good action right in front of the net. Nice job. Nope, this one's just a little more boring. There's not any action. They're standing around waiting, so that one's not doing it. Good, on the move, really nice job. You got both guys running. That's with the 400 2.8 again, really good. Uh, I liked with the head up, but that's, that's fine too with the ball there. And that's all right, they're going and fighting for the ball. That's great, in front of the net. Boom, really good, nice job. Uh, not so much. We don't know what's going on here. Is he gonna punch him in the face? What's up, you know? So not so much on that one. All right, I mean, this is the action that you're gonna get. They're, they're, they're hunting for the goal. Oh, she changed her ISO. She went to 5,000 to get the 13200 to keep it there. That camera can totally handle it. Of course, the less cropping you do, the more clean your image is gonna be. So that's good. That's, that's fine. It's all right. I'm not sure that that one's totally in focus. This is great. That's what we want to see. We want to see the player running up towards us. Um, really nice, you got nice action there. Nope, not a good look on his face. Uh, this is a definitely don't use, get rid of it. Like I don't mind, what the hell? Really? Oh nice, look at with all the, the sweat coming off the guy's top of the head. This is not easy to do with a 402.8, to be able to find the subjects and have it composed like this, so this is this is a winner. I really love the, the sweat dripping off the, the guy's head. That's awesome. Uh, 13200, they, you're freezing it. You know they're jumping for it because they're going up into the air. Can we, it, it would, yes. Look, if it was a vertical, would it be a little better if you could fill the frame? Sure, this stuff happens so fast that you don't have the opportunity to always do that. So perfectly fine, really good to get the subjects in the frame like this, so very nice job on that one. Let me jump in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Now I've been using Squarespace for my personal online portfolio at jaredpolin.com for over 10 years now. 10 years! Because it's simple, easy, affordable, and I don't need to know coding. Head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Uh, only thing here is try to keep the feet in for, for all of them, uh, just, just a little bit, but most people won't even care and it's not a big deal. That's good as well, so it's a nice shot. Good, perfect, right down the middle, editing looks better there. Um, goalie here, yeah, I mean, it's, all, it's, it's obviously a tight shot, so he's going to, to dive for that ball. Not that it was a hard ball, but he wanted to make sure he fell on it, so it's good. She's showing the action really here. This is too hot. Too hot. Just got to bring it down. We, we would work on the color a little more. All right, I don't mind this with both of them charging up the field. It's all right. Yes, disappointment a little bit. Um, yeah, so my recommendation in front of the net was look for the action in front of the net for a corner kick. So, all right, you've dropped the shutter down. You could have left it up there. I think you're still a stop off here, see? That would have been fine. So you could have been at one thirty-two hundredth of a second for this. Color's a little off, we'll work on that, but let's throw some magenta up in here. 
it's, this is great. Like this in front of the net is awesome. You've got one, two, three, four prominent people in it. Fifth guy back here, really good composition, waiting for that corner kick to go off. And let's see what happens when the corner kick goes off. Boom, the goalie punching it out. This isn't, any, isn't easy either, because you're not sure where everything's gonna happen. Um, yeah, you got the goalie punching it out. You got the guys going up for the ball. So good skirm, skir, skirmish in front of the net. And then the last one is the goalie popping in here, but we are focused on Elliot. Only so much you can do with the focus here, you know, as this guy's bouncing into the frame, it's on this person, so it's not always gonna bounce out, but this is great being able to compose it this way and be able to get the subjects in it. Um, let's go ahead and pick the best of the best by giving them fives. So that's a good one, slide tackle. We're gonna do that, we'll speed it up here with library. This is great for telling that story behind the scenes. Meh, I mean, meh, I think we have a better one than that, not as good, out of focus, no. Okay, I like the, the depth on that. Not so much on that one. Yes, we can do that. Thumbs up, sure, we'll go with that. No on that one, yes for this kick. Um, no on this one. We said yes on this, perfect, beautiful, getting that kick. See, we talked about this sitting on the sideline and she remembered it where there was a time where you track, 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 and then you stop shooting when the ball goes the other way or when the, you just stop shooting for some reason let it go, like follow through with the shooting. It's a mistake that I made recently at the soccer matches where the guy goes and does a flip after he gets tripped, but I stopped shooting for some reason because I'm a moron sometimes. So she remembered that and she's like, followed through. And that's what you get here. You get the slide tackle with the guy going down. So really nice job there. Uh, so we did that. Uh, this I like in front of the net, boom. No, yes for this. Okay, we'll give that one a go. Uh, yeah, we'll give that one definite go. No, no, meh. All right, we'll give that one a go. Not so much there. This one running, definitely not that one. Head ball, absolutely. This one, sure, let's give it to it. Running, yep, I like that battling. Goalie, no. This guy getting held up a little bit, sure. These two. Uh, I mean, all the dead space in the middle kind of kills me, so we're not gonna do it. No, no, yes, action. And even though this is out, we're not gonna do it actually. So out of her 40, I went ahead and knocked it down to 21 solid. That would make a really good game gallery. I'm gonna actually send it over to one of my friends who shoots the Union all the time to see what he thinks uh, of, of the stuff as well. So let's jump into these raw files and take a look real quick on how I would edit them. Uh, May edit them myself, but I do want to see what Skittles does. Mm, that's exactly what she did. So Skittles came in a lot hot. Look how it, it over vibranced and saturated everything. So you can't see my edits right now because I don't want to show you the, uh, the to give it away because that's what would happen here. I would give it away. I'm just going to make some tweaks here to this panel because I don't like how green that grass is. I just don't. I just don't. It's too... It's too yellow. I don't like how yellow the grass has become, but I like what Skittles does as a starting point. It, it, it gives us something nice, but also let me hit reset and let me just edit it myself without using Skittles, how I would probably do it. Just tighten it up, warm it up just a little bit. This we can show, so you can see my basic edits here. I'll just not use Skittles for this, but so that's just, Skittles doesn't always work, um, but I do use it for day games and also go in and end up tweaking it because what happens is it's just too, sometimes it's, it, it's well, it's too orange because it's designed, when, when Steven designed Skittles, he designed it for landscapes, not for people. So there's certain changes you need to make, but I do like what it does to the overall image. So I go in and I tweak it when it's involved with people. So I kind of tweak it like, like this, but we're not using Skittles right meow. So I kind of like this, and remember, the lights are real crappy there at night. So that's super flat, that's with the change. It's also, it just feels so green. Let me add a little bit of magenta. Not too much, and there we go. Let me jump in here real quick and say, are you tired of your friends telling you that your photos are fire emojis and that they're thumbs up and they're nice? But you really want someone to tell you what they think, to give you proper feedback. That's why I started fronosphoto.com slash mentorship, because over there you can decide between two different mentorships that I offer. One is a 15 minute rapid fire recorded critique, and the other is a 45 minute one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me directly 
live. Head on over to fronosphoto.com slash mentorship so you can see what they're all about as well as see samples from other ones that I have done. And I will tell you what I think, straightforward, straight to the point, no fire emojis and thumbs up. Now, let's get back to the video. So that's it, I really like this shot. Also, the grass was a, was a, it's a Bermuda, a Bermuda glass, so grass, so it's super nice and green. So maybe I gotta pull out a little bit of this warmth, but I don't wanna take it too far. So we'll, we'll go right there. Now, can we sync it with the next one? The answer is probably no. So I could hit previous, not even close. Not even close, can't do that. So I would just, oh geez, this is just one of those tough things to edit. Maybe just add a little bit of contrast here pull out some of that yellow. And it's tough here, because you got these guys with the orange jerseys, you got a, a, a darker skin subject and a lighter skin subject, so it's gonna be much harder to get it perfect, because if we were exposing for the one guy, it would be that, which then throws the other guy off. There's also not as much light in this, in this area, but I think this is fine. So I'd probably go a little bit right here. Actually, I wanna see what she did. So let's go back to her edit, which is right here, and let's get those guys running down the field, which is this one. All right, not bad. Actually, I like, I like the way that she edited that. Made it much brighter than I did. So there's a whole bunch of different tweaking that you can do to your taste. Um, so we'll, ju we'll just go with that for now. Oop, not that. So everything's going a little slower. But then being that this is the next one, you could just go ahead and hit previous and it, and it will basically match because they're the same in the same sequence. Uh, I didn't like that photo at all. I like this one running down the field. God, this stuff gets so hard to tweak sometimes with the color. It's not, it's not the camera because all the cameras are gonna look very similar. It's just the lighting at this field. Um, it's just really bad. It's like across the field, it's not the same. So in one area, it's gonna be brighter in the other, than the other area, and over here, there's like a lot of fall off, so it just doesn't look as good. Um, so that's, you know, that's what we got. I actually think she did a really good job with her edits. Let me, let me go back and take a look real quick at the jumping ones. I'm gonna just pick the best of the best. Yeah, I think she did a fine job. I don't even think there's much that I need to do, and I would I would spend a little bit more time myself trying to trying to tweak these to taste. Um, but I think she did a really good job doing this. Because I'm fine with you making it a little brighter if you need to, because it's dark in this situation. So that's before. That's slightly after. warm it up just a little bit, and there you go. So yeah, I think she was off to a really good start here with her processing. This just feels a little, wow, that's right off the camera, wow. What interesting color right off the camera. You see the lighting is just gonna be much better in front of the goalie. So that's good, and then the next one's gonna be very similar, and you could probably just hit previous. So that's, that's it, um, I think, for someone's first time shooting a professional soccer match, first time wielding round a 402.8 on an R6, did a really good job. And I don't care if she shot 2,000 photos, I honestly don't know how many photos she shot, but the fact that she narrowed it down to the 41, and then we took it to 22 of the best, we could go even further if we wanted to, to knock it down, but just to have those 21 of a game, with game action, you've got stuff going on in the stands, picking that up, so to be able to just pick it up and get it right off the bat in the first game is really good. Uh, again, don't care about cropping. I know she told me that she straightened some things out because she's a little, sometimes doesn't get them as straight as they could be. Lines are very important, especially when it comes to soccer. Let me jump in here real quick and, and explain that. See how the, the back is straight? That's what you want. You want those boards to be straight. You don't want them to be on an angle. You don't want the field to be on an angle. If the field is on an angle, it looks like they're going downhill or they're going uphill. That's why you can't have Dutch angles or off angles when it comes to sports like this. It needs to be level. And if you need to crop it to do that, then do that, but try to learn from 
your mistakes basically and try to work on keeping those levels straight. I know some photographers leave the vertical, uh, the virtual horizon on. I personally don't. I just look at my backgrounds and my lines and try to keep them as straight as possible based off of just feel and touch just like that. So thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. You can leave them down below. That's where I'm going to leave it. Jared, polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.